Here's Brody Brazil. So I'm not going to lie to you, and I'm not exactly proud of this either, but what you're watching here might be the first, if not among the first, Sacramento Kings videos here on this channel. I'm sorry. I was not doing it intentionally. I was not trying to avoid the team or the franchise. There just wasn't much to go on in recent times other than the fact that they stayed in Sacramento. They built the beautiful Golden One Center. I am so happy about that. I'm a Warriors guy, but I always pull for the Kings as well, too. There are no hard feelings about Sacramento. And especially right now, it warms my heart. It truly does. To see them having what is the beginnings of a storybook season. Still a question mark, right? I don't know exactly where this is going. Small sample size thus far. We'll run you through the results they've had, but a win streak of six for the first time in like 16 years. They have not made the playoffs in 16 years. And because the Seattle Mariners this past summer, because this last baseball season, they got into the postseason, they were the leaders in this playoff drought leaderboard across all of pro sports. They had the longest active drought. They ended it. They unfortunately hand the reins to right now, the Sacramento Kings, who have not tasted the postseason in 16 years. Behind them are both the Jets of the NFL and the Sabres of the NHL. 11 years respectively. So 16 years ago was the last time they saw the second season in the NBA. So how special would it be that when they get this distinct honor passed their way, they erase it immediately? Now, again, we're approaching maybe the quarter point of the NBA season. Like, we're not ready to declare anything. I don't have any exact answers for you. Actually, the way their season started I mean, was certainly discouraging, and it it felt like, oh, here we go again. Loss, 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 loss. They didn't get blown out. Lost by seven in the opener, lost by two to the Clippers, lost by five visiting the Warriors, lost by 15 against Memphis, and then all of a sudden, that's kind of the turning point of their season. Beat Miami, beat Charlotte, beat Miami again. Uh, Sorry, lose to Miami, but beat Orlando in overtime. Then you lose to the Warriors, but then you rack off these six in a row. There is the criticism about Sacramento this season that they allow too many points. Their offense can make up for what their defense is not doing. And yeah, look how many they have been allowing per game. I mean, 100 every single time, but a lot of teens, 120s. They allowed 130 to the Warriors in Game 3 of the season. So so that remains to be seen. But again, look at, look at then, look at the start of the season Versus now, and even the point where they started to get it right, they figured it out. Um, Yeah, it's a six-game win streak now, but it goes back to pretty much game five and beyond of the season. And again, 15 games into the year, they're not even at the quarter point yet. So there's a lot of work to be done, but I, I love the rejuvenation. I love the vibe in Sacramento. I love to see it back. I love that building for the first time having a thing, having something to center around. <clears throat> the success in the basketball team. And also how they've been lighting the beam. <laughs> what is this, you ask? How have you missed it? They started doing this thing where one of the players after the game pushes a button inside the building, which I don't know if it's really connected to the actual beam or, or if somebody else flips the switch, but whatever. It doesn't matter. They have that beautiful purple laser beam that shoots up from downtown Sacramento. You can see it from all over the place. It, it, that's really cool. Like, that that's one of those things that's hard to do right because is it too cheesy? Will it last? Is this something that the city likes? You know, will they rally around this or is it kind of like a, eh, don't do that anymore? Or it's a this, see, I think this is a forever thing that they just started and came up with. And it coincides with, oh, have we turned our franchise around? Now, look, I'm also here to tell you that I'm making this video. I don't talk a lot about the Kings. Usually in the wintertime, I'm completely consumed with hockey. I watch a little Warriors. I have access to watch Kings games, uh, which I know a lot of people here in the Bay Area don't even have that ability because of the NBA's blackout rules. But I think at the most, I've watched somewhere between a quarter and a half of Kings basketball all season long. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, oh, I'm the expert. I know how their season's going. But I I can identify some pretty cool stories, including Harrison Barnes, including Matthew Dellavedova, including De'Aaron Fox, and including Mike Brown. With Harrison, uh, kind of a journeyman through the NBA at this point, 
Freak forget he was even a warrior. Stops in what, Dallas, I think, since then, and being with the Kings, and also being with Sacramento for a couple years now, seeing what looked to be rock bottom, and now hopefully he's seeing what is the start of them getting you know, back out of that trench. Matthew Dellavedova has been in the NBA, I want to say 10 years, has only played like five or so games this year, doesn't get in very often. But the fact that even a guy like that is still around and on this team, and those veterans mesh with a younger player like De'Aaron Fox, who we know is good, who we know is highly touted, and who I just saw here in my email was named Western Conference Player of the Week. De'Aaron Fox Helped the Kings to a perfect 3-0 record this past week. Fox averaged 25 points, shooting 60% on field goals, 41.7% on threes, and almost 89% on free throws. Three boards, 3.7 boards, and eight assists throughout the week. It's the uh, third honor of Western Conference Player of the Week in his career and the first time this season. He's the third player in Sacramento franchise history to get three or more Player of the Week awards, trailing only Chris Webber at seven and DeMarcus Cousins had that honor five times. All of that under the tutelage of head coach Mike Brown, previous Warriors assistant, had some other stops in the NBA, but like proven winner personality brought to this team. And and look, I just picked four individuals here, right? Again, this is not me, your Kings insider, but this is me kind of cherry picking of what stands out to the top, uh, kind of your primer, so to speak, of, of Sacramento. Plenty of cool cool people and stories and backgrounds to root for. And you would expect that, right? But it it goes along with the turnaround and you're starting to see the vibe and the right people and things going the right way. And look, they still might not even make the playoffs again this year. It's a long season. It's the Western Conference. It's... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, all that said, right, got a winning record for the first time in a long time, all that, uh, and nothing is assured, but you can see it going in the right way. You can kind of, if you've watched sports enough, you feel that vibe. And here I am late November making this video. Let's check back on this video in March and April and see how, how the Kings are doing. So cool stories, cool environment. Can the Kings get it back to... Oh, the good old days. Was that 05, 06? No, I think this was even earlier. Yeah. Can they get it? Was that 02, 03, somewhere around there? Can they get it back to the Doug Christie, uh, Bibby, Peja, C-Web, uh, Vlade days? Can they? I mean, Arco is done. Arco's done with and that whole vibe is over. But, you know, to ha- to finally have something in that building that, you know, and the Warriors were so lucky. The Warriors already had what they what they started or started at Oracle. They moved to Chase Center. There's that worry of like, well, we'll never capture what we had over there. And I'm not here to say that they will ever completely match it. The building's just bigger. It's different. It's a different crowd and vibe. But for the Warriors to win a title already at Chase Center, it kind of like establishes something. And Golden One Center needs that too. Sacramento needs this too. Maybe it's the Oakland A's person in me that, that sees a team that was on the brink of maybe relocating, maybe not being in their, their hometown anymore. They fought, they kept it, they built something, they built something great. They finally have a team to go along with it. I am rooting for the Sacramento Kings. And I've, I always have, to be clear, the thing I want most in basketball, like in the last recent years and in the upcoming years, I want the, the Kings and Warriors to meet in a playoff series. Holy smokes, that's never happened in almost 40 years of coexistence in Northern California. I want these guys to play the Warriors. I would love that. And I'm not, I wouldn't even pick a side. I would not even pick a side. I'm just happy to see the Kings on what looks to be a storybook season. It's something to watch, right? If you're just a sports person and you like good stories and and you like to see something that's, uh, you know, up and coming and you like to be ahead of the curve, this is one to be on right now. Let's see what the Sacramento Kings can do this season. Let me know what you think about the group in the comments section below.